So we're going to use an example of a missile to illustrate what we call a ballistic trajectory. And a ballistic trajectory, the word ballistic means that there are no outside forces acting on the object, except for, of course, the force of gravity. So it's very much like a baseball or a soccer ball being thrown. Once it leaves your hand or foot, uh, the laws of physics are the only thing that governs its movement. It can't change its course. It can't fire rockets or anything like that. And so uh, basically, just to give you an idea, we'll talk about a rocket. And if we launch this rocket or this missile, um, it'll have um, flame, energy, rocket engines. But it will reach a height where it will burn out. And so burnout is basically when it runs out of fuel, and that's the end of the force. So after burnout, from that point on, it's considered to be a ballistic trajectory. Obviously, the first part of the path is not ballistic. So let's just set up the question. And I'm going to borrow one from the textbook so we can compare our numbers. It's kind of convenient. If you try to make up too many numbers, then weird things can happen. So um, here is the question that we will tackle. A, 2300 kilogram missile. Uh, burns out. So that's the end of the fuel. 494 kilometers above the Earth's surface. Its velocity at burnout is uh, 3,000 meters per second, which is not unreasonable for a rocket. And its direction is uh, straight up. Question we want to know is what will what maximum height will the missile reach? Okay, so we'll start by oh maybe didn't get a chance to talk. We'll start by drawing a little picture. And uh, the picture that we draw will be the surface of the Earth here. And remember, now this isn't the scale. This will be the center of the Earth, this dot. So remember that we have this distance, which is the radius of Earth. You have to remember that. And we're launching from the surface. So this surface level here is our position number one. Then the rocket is traveling up. Actually, no, I'm, I made a mistake. That's not going to be our position number one. That's just going to be the start of the scenario. Burnout happens here. where the, That's where it becomes uh, ballistic. So we'll call that our position number one. Because we, we don't have enough information to figure out what's happening before that. And then, of course, after burnout, the rocket is then, you could kind of consider it like it's coasting at this point, right? It's just kind of shooting up because it had kinetic energy. And it's going to rise up to position number two, which is the maximum height. So our scenario is, is between position one and two and what's happening. Obviously, at position one, we have a tremendous amount of kinetic energy, right? But we also have gravitational energy. Because, so I'll put the little one for those, uh, because you'll notice that we do have height. Not only height above the surface, but height measured from the center. Remember that when we use our new energy equation, all heights are measured from the center of the Earth, right? And then that would be the height for the distance involved. I guess you could call that R1. And so 
we can kind of figure that out right now. We know that the radius of the Earth is three. No, I did. Uh, yeah, that's right. Three point six eight, I believe, times ten to the six, and we have to add to that the four hundred and twenty-four. Um, 494, sorry, meter, kilometers that we have for this part above the surface, right? So if we add that on, I think that comes out to 94. I think it's 6.38. Oh, yeah, you're right. It is 6. You know, I did that same thing in the first block this morning. Same mistake. 6.38. I reversed those two numbers in my head. Must be something today. 6.38, and then we're going to add uh, uh, 494, well, we're going to add 0 0.494 times 10 to the 6. So what does that come out to? Well, it looks like uh, 6.87. So I think it's that number, right? Double check my that. Uh, yeah? That will be our R1, assuming we're correct. Good. Okay. R2, then, is the R that's associated with the second position from the Earth's surface. Sorry, from the Earth's center. That would be R2. So that's kind of our picture. And now what we're going to do is we're going to use our conservation of energy uh, situation to solve the problem. So we know that... Uh, the total mechanical energy at any position, call it position one, must be equal to the total kinetic and potential or the total mechanical energy at any other position, right? Assuming no losses of air resistance and whatnot. So this is the law of conservation of energy. So that means that any kinetic energy, because remember mechanical energy is the sum of your kinetic and your gravitational. So the kinetic energy at position 1 plus the gravity energy at position 1 is going to equal the kinetic energy at position 2 and the gravity energy at position 2. All right. But at maximum height, just like in previous questions, what happens to your kinetic energy? Well, zero. becomes zero. Right. So at maximum height, the rocket or the missile is going to be going up, going up, losing kinetic energy, losing kinetic energy, trading it for height, and eventually, at max height, the kinetic energy, EK2, will be zero. There won't be any left up there. So that means my equation is a little simpler. EK1 plus EG1 becomes EG2. And of course, just to show you where the book is, because the textbook it doesn't give you this little introduction. The textbook doesn't write the best essay. It jumps into the paragraph four before it actually describes what's going on. But if you move the EG1 to the other side, you get EG2 take away EG1. And this is where the textbook begins its solution. It says, well, the kinetic energy that the rocket has at Birdo from the engines will be converted into potential. It so it will result in a change in potential energy. We'll see how 2 minus 1 is like delta. Right? So it is a change in the potential energy. But I like to start it back up here because this is a much better sort of introduction to what's going on. Okay, so that's where we're at. Let's put in the numbers that we can or the, the expressions that we can. Kinetic energy is 1 half V and V squared and it would be the speed at position 1, right? Now, we're going to use our new formula for energy, not MGH anymore. It's too high up. And the value of G is not uh, accurate anymore. So we're going to put negative G, M1, M2, over R2, because that's EG2 at height number 2. We're going to put the minus in for the, uh, the, the, what the equation says, but then we're also going to write the EG1, and remember, because these are negative values, we have to put it all in brackets, we have two negative signs, R1. So this is what we end up with. The negative signs get a little bit tricky uh, if you're not careful. 
Now, to simplify our lives a little bit, we'll do, we'll do some factoring on this side, just to make the putting in the numbers a little bit easier. I mean, you don't have to. You could just throw in the numbers and crunch it, but we can factor out G, M1, and M2, and, uh, sorry, just factor that out front, never mind that. And if you factor that out of that first term, you'll be left with, you're pulling out the negative and the G M1 M2, leaving you with a 1 on top and an R2 on the bottom. Don't confuse the 2 with R squared. Remember, these are not squared radiuses. Uh, the second term has two minuses here, which will turn it into a plus. But then when we factor out the negative sign here, then this will become a minus again. So that means that we have minus, oops, let's go black, minus 1 over R1. The other thing we can do is we can cancel uh, out one of these masses because the mass on this side represents the mass of the missile. That's its kinetic energy, right? Then one of these masses is the mass of the missile. So let's get rid of the missile's mass. And that shortens things up a little further. And let's put in the numbers that we know. One half. Speed was 3,000. Is that right? 3,000 meters per second. So we put that here. And we have to square that. Negative 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11 multiplied by the, the remaining mass would be the mass of the Earth. You know? So 5.98 times 10 to the 24. And then inside here, R2 is the height we're trying to find, the maximum height of the missile. And R1 would be the number that we added together back up here. We had to add the uh, radius of the Earth plus the height 6.874 times 10 to the 6. And uh, I'll put the 4 in there for now. With the same things, it will probably disappear. But that's okay. All right. And now we have to just carefully crunch the numbers. And this is where you got to go slow, do everything twice because you got big numbers and scientific notation. So this side becomes 4.5 times 10 to the 6. So if a couple of you crunch this with me. Question, Your Honor? That's a good question. Let's go back and look. Why did we add the 494? Remember, when we use these formulas for energy, Everything is measured from the surface of the Earth, or the center of the Earth. I keep saying surface. The center of the Earth is your benchmark or your zero point. So this height right here at position one is 494 above the surface, 494,000 meters, but it's also Earth's radius above the center. So we're adding the two together to get the true height. Think of it like the true height above Earth's center. Okay. So, let's do this next little piece here, 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11, multiplied by 5.98 times 10 to the 24 equals, uh, you'll get a negative number, and it's 3.99 times 10 to the 14. Anybody else get that? Good. Okay, now, inside the brackets, um, I can do this little bit of math. I can take that 6.874 times 10 to the 6, and I can do a little 1 over that, and I can get minus 1.45 times 10 to the negative 7. So I just did a 1 over it, reciprocal. Now I'm going to take this number here, and I'm going to move it to the other side of the equation by division. So it will be 4.5 times 10 to the 6 divided by 3.99 times 10 to the 14, which comes out to a very small negative number, negative 
3 times 10 to the negative 8. Anybody else get that? Double check. And I'll just keep filling in the rest of this. Are we okay? Where did the 1.13 come from? Well, it's the 4.5 times 10 to the 6 divided by okay. the 3.99 times 10 to the 14. 1.13. Okay, so we're good so far. Now we have to add the 1.45 times 10 to the negative 7 to the other side of the equation. So we have 1.13, and it's a negative number, and it's also got a negative exponent, 10 to the negative 8. And we're going to add to that 1.45 times 10 to the negative 7, and you get 1.34. times 10 to the negative 7, I believe, equals 1 over R2. And so if we take the reciprocal of both sides, we can get R2. So then we just do a 1 over. Then we get about 7.5 times 10 to the 6 meters. Now that would be the height above the center of the Earth. If we wanted to measure how high it was above Earth's surface, we would have to subtract from that. So that's above the center. Right? If we wanted to know above the surface of the Earth, we would have to just take that number and subtract 6.38 times 10 to the 6. So that would mean that that's approximately equal to uh, 1.1 times 10 to the 6 meters above Earth's surface. So we can kind of subtract out the surface uh, above, right. There. So that's how you would deal with this. It's exactly the same as when you used MGH. Same idea, but just you have different formulas to throw in, making it a little bit more tricky. The numbers are a little more crazy. Uh, how do you get a negative inside the one over bracket? The negative inside the brackets comes in way back here. Yeah. And we factor out right here. So what we did is we factored out this term, right? So when you pull it out of the first term, it results in just this, because the, the negative g m1 m2 comes out, leaving you with one. If you multiply this back in, you'll end up right back here where you started. Mm -hmm. Now, these two negatives make the second term a positive term, yeah. but we're factoring out a negative right here. So that means that that makes it negative again. And if you multiply this in here times that, you will end up getting a positive g m1 m2 over r. Okay. Right? So that's the factoring out part. Okay, so that's that. Nice and simple example. Hmm. Question? What did I do to get here from the center? Well, uh, if you just think about it, if this is Earth, right, and there's the center and there's your height, well, we found out the answer of 7.5 times 10 to the 6 is the height from the center of the Earth. So if you subtract 6.38 times 10 to the 6, which is Earth's radius, then you end up with this number, which would tell you how high you are above Earth's surface. Okay. No? Yes? All right. Good. I got that right this time. 6.38 times 10 to the 6. Okay. So that's the end of that. Simple as that. And uh, we'll stop here, and then we'll do a, uh, in, in the next video, we'll talk about two more small things that we can do with gravitational energy that are kind of fun.